When you hear the word missile, you probably imagine a deadly weapon made with modern technology. But calling it only a weapon of destruction would be a mistake, because missiles are also used by nations to protect their independence and sovereignty. Let's go back to the year 1232. During the Battle of Kaifeng between the Mongols and China, the Chinese became the first to use rocket-like missiles in war. They built rockets using gunpowder. It was basically a mix of hand grenades and rockets. These were called fire arrows, wooden arrows with gunpowder attached and fired into the air. This was the world's first primitive missile technology. Later, the idea spread to the Arab world and to India. Most notably, in the 1790s, Tipu Sultan, the ruler of Mysore, used iron-cased rockets known as the Mysorean rockets. These proved highly effective against the British forces. Eventually, the British carried this technology back to Europe. In today's video, we will learn about the propellants of modern long-range ballistic missiles powered by liquid fuel. So, let's begin. This video is made only to give a basic idea. It is not for beginners, and it is not for advanced experts either. Now, let's go inside a missile. This is the liquid oxidizer tank. In any military missile, very high energy oxidizers are used. Examples include liquid oxygen, nitrogen tetroxide, or red fuming nitric acid. Next, this is the liquid fuel tank. Depending on the type of missile, the liquid fuel can be different. It can be kerosene, RP1, monomethylhydrazine, or liquid hydrogen, also known as LH2. This is the turbo pump. Both the liquid oxidizer and the liquid fuel are pumped into the combustion chamber through this pump. And this is the combustion chamber. Here, the fuel and oxidizer mix together, ignite, and produce a huge amount of gas. This is the injector. Its job is to mix the fuel and the oxidizer and spray them into the chamber. And this is the igniter. High voltage electricity is supplied to the igniter, which creates a spark. Because of that spark, the fuel inside the combustion chamber starts to ignite and blast. This is the nozzle. The gas produced inside the combustion chamber rushes out at high speed through the nozzle. Now, let's see how a liquid fuel missile actually works. Step 1. The turbo pumps are started. As a result, fuel from the fuel tank and oxidizer from the oxidizer tank are sent to the injector. Step 2. The injector mixes the fuel and oxidizer and sprays them into the chamber. Step 3. The igniter comes into action. High voltage electricity creates sparks inside the combustion chamber. These sparks ignite the sprayed mixture of fuel and oxidizer. But saying ignite alone would be too simple. In reality, the combination of fuel, oxidizer, and the high voltage spark creates a controlled blast. It's almost like a bomb, but it is carefully controlled. This makes the fuel start burning. And then, inside the combustion chamber, very high temperature and high pressure gas is produced. Step 4. 
the high pressure gas produced inside the combustion chamber rushes out at high speed through the nozzle. In other words, this gas becomes the thrust of the rocket. We all know Newton's third law of motion. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. We have also seen this in science practical classes. For example, when a balloon is filled with air and released, it flies in the opposite direction because of the reaction force. A rocket or missile works in the exact same way. From the engine or nozzle of the rocket, the burning fuel creates high-speed gas. This gas pushes backward and, as a result, the rocket or missile is pushed forward. This forward push is called thrust, and because of thrust, the rocket or missile moves in the opposite direction of the escaping gas. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. See you again in another video. Thank you.